The heel strike can exacerbate knee injuries, slow your speed, and rob you of your punching power. It's like hitting the brakes. But using the right context, it's exactly what you need. I'm gonna to touch on a lot of different concepts here and keep the car analogies going to really drive the message home. Now, to make sure this doesn't go off too long, it's gonna be another episode of Four Minute Boo. So let's get from zero to 88 miles per hour. Start time. Let's cover running first. Heel striking in itself is not inherently bad. Studies have shown no difference in the rate of injury between runners who land on their heels first and those who land on the midfoot or ball of the foot. However, if you have knee injuries already, the force curve of a heel strike means a big spike in impact compared to the other more gentle gates. This can make any niggling knee issues much worse. A lot of us martial artists use running as basic conditioning and knee problems, unfortunately, aren't uncommon amongst us. So you might want to consider trying out landing on the balls of your feet. Your calves might hate you for a while, but it might be just what you need. Plus, you're far more likely to overextend your leg with heel striking, and this does come with an increased risk of injury and a reduction in running efficiency. It's like slamming on the brakes with every step. Speaking of efficiency, if you're after the maximum transfer of momentum at any cost, running on the balls of your feet is the place to be. Just take a look at sprinters. They've perfected the art of moving forward with as much power as possible, and they land on the ball or middle of their foot. When we look at martial arts, that idea of preserving momentum carries over. If we want to use momentum to power punches, landing toes first keeps our weight up, preserving that momentum, and gives our punch more time to land. It's a little bit like trying to break on ice. You press the pedal, but your momentum isn't stopped. This is why when you see professional fighters jab, their toes land before their heel. They need to preserve the momentum. When we attack with our lead hand then, landing toes first, whether it be a jab or a lunge, is often the way to go. Contrast this to fencing, where power isn't needed, and instead it's all about timing and the perception of range. Landing on the heel slows the momentum, stopping the fencer from barreling into their opponent and allowing them to keep their body back for as long as possible. It disguises how much range they have left before they complete the maneuver by bringing up their rear foot. It's a bit like in a film where a car hits something and the rear flips forward because it still has energy. This is very much like a variation of Pubu, where the toes are lifted, prepping you to move in and close the distance. The grounding effect of placing our heel first can be really useful when we're trying to generate rotational power or when we're trying to pivot because it creates a strong structural alignment, stability, and places our weight closer to our center of gravity. So if we're stepping and throwing a cross or a hook, use the heel first. Give this a go. Throw a lead hook landing just after your foot does. See how different it feels landing toes first versus heels first. We can explore this further with two traditional Kung Fu moves. Stepping into Mabu and punching with the lead hand involves both momentum and rotational power. But depending on how you want to apply this, you need to step in a different way. If you're purely after speed and maximum punching power, then stepping with the toes and dropping the weight is the way to go. This feels really fluid as you do it in Lian Huan Chun, for example. If you want to pull someone onto your attack, however, you need to use rotation because you can't pull back with much power with your rear hand whilst your body is driving forwards. Using the same move, just focus on the rear hand Feel the difference in power that you can generate, stepping with the heel and rotating versus stepping with the toes. It's the same basic movement, but the footwork completely changes how you might apply it. And you might have your own preference. This is like a handbrake turn, turning that forward momentum into rotational power. Hellwood. You can also use the heel landing first if you want to stand or stomp on someone's foot and not lose your balance. Finally, we can look at this walking stance. Yaobu. This is where we use momentum and rotation in a rear hand strike, hitting your opponent just before the front foot lands. Landing with the ball of the foot keeps the momentum going as you chase after your opponent and allows you to sink the strike in after impact. The final position looks very similar to our standard twist from Mabu, but the mechanics are very different. This relies just on grounding and rotation. You can look at this as the difference between longer and closer range fighting, where the requirements for reaching your opponent with a powerful strike are different. Phew, okay, stop the clock, we made it. Now, if you want more information about rotational power, check out this playlist here. It's got some videos in there about generating this type of power using your stances. Don't forget to subscribe, you'll stay up to date on all of my future content. I've got some good videos coming, and until then, see you soon.